No one gave up seat for pregnant woman. A minute later, she did something nobody expected. He received some unexpected news the following day and was summoned to the bus depot. Can you imagine riding a public transportation system while expecting and having other passengers refuse to give up their seats for you? Well, Emily Robson experienced it while riding the bus to work in her third trimester. The Milwaukee native, 29, breathed a sigh of relief when she saw an open seat on the crowded bus. But then the unexpected happened. A young man forced his way to that seat and claimed it was already occupied by him. Never mind, Emily said, hoping someone would exit the following stop so she could get a seat. However, two stops later, she was still standing and nobody had left the station. That's all I got. Get out of the bus, everyone, the motorist shouted. You all need to go right away. That doesn't apply to you, lady. Emily had to ride the bus to a crucial meeting a little outside the city because her car was at the mechanic getting fixed. Despite being on maternity leave, she had to attend the event in order to deliver a crucial presentation and couldn't afford to miss it. Emily, who was already toting a bag, found it difficult to maintain her equilibrium. She kept bumping into people as the bus proceeded since it was so incredibly crowded. She accidentally brushed a passenger, and when they gazed at her in rage, she said, I I'm sorry. Emily looked around to see if someone would let her sit in their seat because she was exhausted and worried about their infant. However, most commuters chose to avoid her or claimed they had never even noticed. It was obvious that the poor woman detested taking the bus that day. She had no other option, though. A little more than ten minutes later, the driver abruptly slowed down to make room for a car coming from the other side. When the bus abruptly came to a stop, Emily's bag just barely touched the passenger who took the seat next to her. He said, watch it, lady. Don't hit me in the head with that bag of yours, please. Emily said, I'm sorry. She took her bag off one shoulder and placed it on the other. However, the bus abruptly shifted and her bag once more and unintentionally struck the man's head. The man began to lose it at this point and gave Emily a cold stare. He yelled, instead of assaulting me with your suitcase, why don't you just stay home? Give me a chance to breathe and move aside. I'm breathing hard. Emily was shocked and humiliated. No one came to her defense as she turned to look around. To everyone's surprise, the bus abruptly slowed down and came to a complete stop on the side of the road. What is happening there? Reuben McKenzie, the driver, addressed the person who had offended Emily in this question. I overheard you scream at the pregnant woman. You weren't taught respect by your mother, were you? The man was indignant. He looked around and couldn't believe how many people were now staring at him. Reuben remarked, It would be fantastic if someone would let the poor lady sit. You are occupying a priority seat, as I can see. Why not stand up and give her a seat, he told the obnoxious man. The man snapped at that point. The man approached the driver and yelled at him. Driver, mind your own business and stop telling me what to do. Observe the wheel, please. If it bothers you so much, why don't you let her take your seat? Suddenly, other individuals joined the nasty man in speaking out against the driver and Emily. Why would she board a crowded bus if she was expecting a baby, replied a different man. Yes, sir. Even though I work, sacrificing my seat would require me to walk approximately four kilometers while standing. No way, added a second. Reuben felt let down. He observed Emily's weariness and anxiety, but he was powerless to persuade the other passengers to allow Emily to sit. He then had a concept. He started the car and turned the key. When the bus eventually started moving once again, the onboard passengers groaned and completely forgot about poor Emily. The bus stopped at the following stop after slowing down and stopping for around five minutes. Reuben looked around and observed that no one was descending. As they waited for him to restart the bus, the passengers turned to face him. To their dismay, Reuben did not do it but instead shot off the engine and exited the bus. That's all I got. Get out of the bus, everyone. The motorist shouted, you all need to go right away. That doesn't apply to you, lady. What do you mean leave? The travelers swore. We bought the tickets. This bus won't be moving any faster. Get away. I won't start my car until everyone leaves, Reuben shouted. You may get on the next bus. Next bus? For doing this to us, you will lose your job, the unkind man said. I don't care. I learned etiquette and kindness from my mother, Reuben shot back. She also taught me to respect authority. So leave now or I'll yank you out by your shirt. The passengers were forced to descend one by one, with the exception of Emily. She remained behind to observe Reuben's next move. The driver gestured at her. Miss, please hold on. I'll return straight away. Please have a seat. Reuben came back with a bouquet around five minutes later. These are for you right here. I'm sorry you had to go through so much hardship. I'll drop you off there if you'll only let me know where you're going. 
It's just you and the bus. Emily's shock was palpable. She couldn't believe the sympathetic driver would jeopardize his livelihood to help her. She relaxed and enjoyed the ride for the next hour, chatting and laughing with the driver. Reuben was so happy with what he accomplished, but the following day he received a call to the bus terminal. The nice driver was prepared to forfeit his uniform and go, but something else happened that caused him to break down in tears. Mr. McKenzie, did you drop the passengers midway to take a stance for a pregnant woman? Why did you put your job at jeopardy for a total stranger? Do you know that that could lead to your termination? I am aware, but she could have been replaced by anyone. My wife, sister, or even daughter might have been the person. And I can't take it when people make fun of or disrespect them in public, Reuben tacked on. Then he heard thunderous claps behind him. When the driver turned, he noticed Emily, her husband, and a few other people. Edward Robson, Emily's husband, had recently been named regional head of the bus depot, it turned out. He wanted to thank the driver after Emily described what happened. Reuben received a bonus and two weeks off work to take his family on a paid holiday to Cape Town, which added to his surprise. Brother, you deserve this. Reuben was crying when Emily patted his shoulder. Every bus that was a part of the depot after that had seats specifically designated for expectant mothers. To help passengers understand the need of showing kindness and respect to pregnant passengers, the phrase be nice to pregnant women and respect them was posted above the seat. Respect and courtesy are due to expectant mothers. When he stood up for Emily against the other passengers, the driver gave the other passengers an important lesson. Take a stand when you perceive something to be unjust. Do the right thing and you'll receive unexpected rewards. Driver Reuben halted the bus and ejected everyone but Emily after observing how poorly she was treated inside. Even though he was aware that doing so would cost him his career, he spoke up for the expectant mother. His thoughtful act ultimately brought him wonderful rewards. Employers occasionally require confirmation from OBGYNs like myself that their employees are pregnant and are unable to perform particular tasks, including carrying 50-pound boxes or climbing ladders, as though they are unaware of the physical changes that occur over time during pregnancy. An understanding employer could be willing to make such accommodations for a worker who has a broken leg, but wouldn't do the same for a pregnant worker unless their doctor provided very clear proof that doing so would be medically required. Pregnant women run the danger of losing their jobs because employers are less likely to be compassionate and offer appropriate modifications if they fail to accept their limits. You may question, asking for a medical note. That does seem reasonable, but think about this. The company may legally be entitled to fire the employee for being unable to work 10-hour shifts as a per previous agreement, even though they have a doctor's note declaring that they can work 8-hour shifts at most. Pregnant people are disproportionately vulnerable to discrimination because pregnancy is not regarded as a temporary handicap under the Americans with Disabilities Act. The U.S. Equal Job Opportunity Commission has looked into a number of lawsuits alleging unlawful discrimination against pregnant workers in the last 10 years or more. In around 75% of these cases, the employment was terminated. These workers put their lives in danger to create new life for the globe. Is it too much to ask that they be allowed to sit on a stool rather than have to stand for four hours? Can someone receive the occasional five minutes to give oneself insulin if they have diabetes during pregnancy and need to do so to stay healthy and lower the risk of heart abnormalities and other fetal abnormalities? By the way, gestational diabetes is more likely to be accepted as a disability under the ADA. Be prepared. Employers frequently decline the adjustments that pregnant employees request which could lead to termination. Five years after an amendment was passed to make it simpler to obtain ADA protection for pregnancy, more than 5,000 pregnancy discrimination complaints were submitted to the EEOC in 2013. 